welcome to this live session. We're going to be looking at photography, the using of images to communicate your art, to promote and to sell your art. My name is Sonja Smal here. I live in the Netherlands outside of Amsterdam, originally from Cape Town, South Africa, and I love helping artists take bold, brave new steps so that they can not only make their art with more confidence, but actually start to promote, sell using an online space. Maybe you went to the art school, never learned how to do it. You learned how to paint and how to draw. That was me. Never learned about marketing, never knew how to connect my art with an art audience. And just through the years, I started educating myself, taking courses and really getting an understanding of how this marketing works. Way back in the 90s, when I went to the Art Academy, there was no online space. So it's something I really had to learn. And uh, it's all possible, like you're designing your artwork, like you're composing your paintings. If you get an understanding of the structure and the strategies behind it, you can also apply that in your marketing. And that it's so, so essential if you want to start connecting and start showcasing your work and start standing out because it's a busy, busy place, this online space. And using those images correctly, using all those tools in a, just a clever way, smart way is going to make a huge difference for your art and for your art business. All right. <laughs> then, taking those compelling images to promote and to sell your art. Now, those are two distinct different areas, promoting and selling. Promoting, you're actually always promoting everything that you're doing. You are putting online on your social channels, on your website, you are promoting, you are showcasing, you are sharing, you are saying, I'm an artist, this is what I do, this is why I do it, this is what I love about it, this is what I'm passionate about. You're continually showing up and that is marketing, you're promoting. So it's not necessarily that you're continually just, you know, selling out a new painting, it's for sale, it's for sale, sell, buy here, buy here, that's not what you do, you are showing people you are showing up that you are an artist and if you do that consistent consistently which i really advise in a coherent and cohesive way people will start to remember you and think of you when they're thinking artist so there's are two distinct things the promoting and the selling so i want to really put them um just bring them separate them because it's a different kind of photography different imagery is needed between the two. When you are promoting your work, you're inspiring, you're informing, you are getting people excited, you're sharing your process, you're sharing your inspiration, you are promoting yourself as an artist. You're just sharing your love and your passion. When you take the transition, you go into the sales side of your imagery, sales side of your business, of course you're still inspiring, you are educating, you are informing people, but there's that added needed um, part where you are taking away their maybe their apprehensions or their concerns so this is more in a shop area so say maybe you have a shop platform on your website or you're selling on Etsy or on your social channels your images need to reflect reality the colors how you're hanging it up is it framed is it not framed how does it look in a space so you're far more giving you're getting more clues so that people feel confident and you're building trust to facilitate a sale. So it's less of that emotional, moody kind of atmosphere that you're putting in your imagery. It's more of the, also the facts, how, what can people uh, expect? And now there's such cool technology that you can actually add codes to your website so that people can project their artwork on a space in their living room so they can see or it's something that you could facilitate. You can say, send me a picture of your space that you're thinking, I'm gonna add the art piece in, in a nice little mock-up, and I'll send it to you so people can get an idea. So there is a lot possible, but there's a distinction between those two, selling and promoting. Your art, <laughs> using those images, needs to be strategic. There needs to be a thought process behind your images so with everything that i teach something that you do intentionally so a strategy so it's a system it's a thought out process that you've 
really thought through and made your own. That's very personal, your strategy that you're using your images. It's clean, it's clear, it's doable, it's manageable. It's for you, part of your art business structure. So that your imagery is part of that. You need to get clean and clear about that. I want you to start off with the three major strategies for using images. Before we get to technicalities, which we will do in the session, just want to cover three of those strategies. Just going to check my technology if everyone is hearing me. Because I'd hate to just be talking to myself. But I see thumbs up, so I think we're all good. <laughs> the first strategy of how you portray and use your imagery is product. And I think that's the most common used among artists because you are an artist making art, which is a product. And that product you, you make an image of and you see, share it on your Insta feed, you share it on your Facebook, you share it on your website. So that's just the way that you see it, the product. Then you can add that layer of process some of you have chosen to do that. Instagram lends itself beautifully for that. Also just to share moments of process that you may be working towards a collection, you're working towards a body of work and you're sharing little snippets of your process, your palette, of your brushes, of your um, inspiration. Maybe you have a mood board or maybe you have certain sections in your studio where you're doing your research or that you're outside doing plein air work or you're going on a research trip. That's all part of process. So that is, could, you could add that part to your strategy. And then the third is personality, is adding more of yourself, more maybe a more vulnerable moments, more personal things that inspired you. So more interaction, maybe your hands, maybe you are talking, so you're adding the dimension of your voice using moving images adding part of your household, if they're okay with it, taking images of things that sort of interact where your personal life and your artistry sort of interact. Where are those moments of interaction? Where do they come together? You can add that to your strategy, but these are distinct strategies and you can choose. So that's something I want you to get clear about. What strategy are you gonna to use to communicate your imagery, communicate your art. Are you gonna keep it with just the product? Are you gonna add that layer of process? And are you gonna, on top of that, still add that layer of personality, really showing who you are? And I think you can conclude which is the most effective in the social media day and age. Layering all three is very effective. But I know artists that have chosen specific strategies. For example, Ophira Dix is one of my teachers in the, was one of my teachers in the north of the Netherlands at the Classical Academy. She is just posting product. So if you look at her Insta feed, it's just product. It's just photos, images that she's taken, a video of her artwork. That's what she communicates, that's what she's posting also on her website. And also Heidi, she's a fine artist, super hyper-realistic she works. Generally, she's only posting product, only her artwork. It's a strategy. For some artists, it works. They are more established or more experienced. They have to do less marketing or they're working with galleries. The galleries do their representation and the promotion. So they are just keeping up a social presence on Insta or Facebook or whatever platforms they choose. Then we have Jonas Smart with his uh, lovely wife. They are a Scottish uh, couple. Uh, working in ceramics and in woodcut woodwork and they are choosing the strategy of product and process. You hardly see anything of their personal life. Here now and again you see hands, now and again you see some interaction but generally the strategy is the product. So you see a whole array of photos of the Insta feed, beautiful photos and images of products thought about background, lighting, it's daylight, it's, it's natural, very naturalistic, which suits the medium that they are working in, that he is working in, this is Jonah's work. 
and then some lifestyle as far as um, as for a restaurant they made he made a whole series and this is um, a photo shoot for the restaurant so that's more the atmosphere behind it that can be a strategy it could be your strategy and then you can layer it with the third and that's more personality we see a lot of that online we see that on insta on um, uh, websites and it's something that you need to think about how you're going to be doing adding that layer of your personality because that's ultimately people want to find out more about you they want to understand more about your process more about your inspiration and then how can you put yourself on that website in this cold screen how what elements can you use to communicate that and this is a, a sort of layout of Laurie Ann, she's uh, from the US, an artist is, that does that very well. On her Insta feed, really stays with him, her palettes. She uh, uses uh, backdrops at her home. She has a studio and she takes photos. Everything that's on the wall is also for sale. That's what she communicates. So she's finished a new piece and she does a personality shoot of herself. She has a famous dog <laughs> online. And um, so she, you know, that's something that's important to her is her um, her dog, and often you see her husband, or they go on camping trips, and that's where she does her play and her work. That is something that she's chosen as a strategy. It's that part of that nature. It's part of her hobby. It's part of the family situation, and then putting that in a setting in her studio in her home. But it's been thought about how you're going to style us, how you're going to use these personal spaces, whether you're comfortable with that or not, something that you need to wrestle through and um, you know what's going to work for you and for your art and where you're going to take those images. Do you have a studio space or a workspace in your home where you're making your art, where you can sort of focus your photography strategy around that people start recognizing you and your style. This is uh, Juliet. She is an illustrator. She uses watercolors, water um, colors, and uh, different markings for uh, reproduction. So she's really gone into the reproduction space. So her work is principal on all kinds of surfaces. Also showing lifestyle. If you look at her website and look at her social channels, it's very personal. Personal stories, personal quotes, personal. Um, moments of inspiration that she's sharing but there's a coherency in her feeds because her art of course that's with you too your art will bring the coherency and that's what somehow our brain is always looking for patterns something that is repeating itself that we start recognizing and that's the same for example on your social feed on your website you want people to start recognizing who your work you want to become more established as you move from being a beginner starter to more emerging to an experienced artist the more you're doing the more you've developed your style the more people will start recognizing it and how you take your photos will add to that currency or not and that will bring disruption people will be confused but i thought you were doing this but now you're doing that you need to edit and curate your feeds but adding that layer of personality brings just that more you know, that personal feel i think you can all relate to that please just share in the comments quickly um, if you have a strategy around your photography the images that you're using are you leaning more towards product that you're going to do really beautiful product photos maybe there's something you need to outsource so that you can get good quality product photos and sprinkle those with your mobile photography are you going to do process adding that or that layer of personality or all three just briefly write in the comments do you have a strategy or is this something you're going to be thinking about maybe you've never thought about it that you can get so intentional uh, with an image strategy so let me know throw it in the comments <laughs> are you going to go for product are you going to go for process are you going to go for personality a blend of all three Let me know. And welcome to all those people that have joined in that I didn't say hello to. I see some of you here. Good that you could join in. 
Jan is presently using product, so very just the, the art itself. Okay, Elizabeth says more process. It's good to see what are you, you know, more inclined to do and how can you add to the mix so that there's a more of a blend of your communication so that you are still within your own style, with, within your own signature. And we're going to be looking at that at your branding within that palette that you are working in, but then adding those different uh, strategies. Right, Anya, at least Anya says, you know, I understand there's that whole element when you get more into the personality side, you have to be a little bit more vulnerable. You need to show a little bit more of yourself, whether that's your hands or, you know, you in action or taking a video of yourself or even doing a selfie moment. It can be a little bit uh, scary, but try it. You know, take this new year as a challenge to go that step further little bit more out of your comfort zone because that's where the growth is we're staying in our comfort zone we are going to only going to be doing what we've always been doing and get those same results so stepping out great attitude Anya and I want to encourage all all of us and I'm talking to myself too to take bolder steps because that's how you can start differentiating yourself with the thousands and thousands and thousands of others out there because you're going to get more intentional and more strategic and more clear. And the clearer you are, the better communicator you'll be. And the better communicator you'll be, you're going to see that in your results, in your, how people engage with your art and eventually in your revenue, your sales. Because this is all leading up the promoting. You are, you are sending out signals. You're sending out messages to people so that they can start understanding you really you know getting to know your art and really liking your work really appreciating your process behind it and then from there they can you build that trust which is a great foundation for that sales jane is working ongoing for all three very good so give that some thought so that you know that there are different uh, strategies in this whole um, imagery, the Im using of images. And challenge yourself to develop your own style, your own style in how you take your photos so that it oozes in all your platforms, social, websites, who are you? And that it all starts with you. I mean, you can clone, there's so much out there, you can clone different you know, compositions, different colors, use different filters. What you see other people doing but eventually you want to develop your style what makes you you what makes you make the art that you're making and i think it's there's so much correlation there as you start developing your style the more secure and confident you're feeling with your style you think wow now i can really communicate what i want how i want to do it with the style it's really is developing it will reflect in your photography so that you can start becoming recognized you can start being really clear clear about who you are so people see that image of you on their feed they know whoa that's Anne. that's uh, one of her artworks or that's how she photographed or that's how he's making his art so it's something that you recognize some fun thing for you to do is to go back to people that are really successful you can go to instagram and look at artists that you really admire that are making good stuff and are really making waves online and go and look at their earlier posts everyone struggles in the beginning trying to find their signature trying to find their looks and this is terry she's from san francisco and uh, just random you know take artists and just go back to how they started on instagram we all started you know communicating not really knowing what we're doing <laughs> communicating with mom or with friends or our social channels were really places where we interacted with friends and family and slowly as we develop it becomes more of a professional space or maybe you have a separate account for that and you get more clear about what you actually wanted to communicate getting putting boundaries down okay that i'm sharing that i'm not sharing this is going to add to my story this is going to distract from my story so have a look online and get some inspiration 
making photos, images is a very important aspect. It's actually the most powerful part of your communication because you're an artist, which is a visual medium. We are so, we are living in this visual time. So I mean, you have a great profession to use this medium powerfully if you know how to use it effectively. On the other hand, it can really work against you because if you're using bad images or not the right images, it can really confuse people or um, devaluate your art. And you want photo, your photos, you wanted to elevate your art. You wanted to bring the best out of the things that you're doing. So that's why it's important to know just those things, how you can make a difference. Adding that personality to your website, to your social channels, is done by style elements. Because you can't just, you know, you're not there. Personally, you have to use that space using little things of your personality. Maybe a doodle, an illustration, colors, what typography. It all adds to what you say. And what images you add to that, on top of that, that is just, that's the cherry on the cake that sort of finishes off in it is a very powerful style element. It's something that I'm going to be teaching in my workshop, How to Craft a Winning Artist Website. We really focus on styling because you want to build a clean, clear brand. Branding is a word, it's a Norwegian word where they used to, and I still do, <laughs> in some parts of the world, they are branding animals to bring identity. It's a certain marking that they're adding to livestock to communicate that's from me, that's from you, so could, you could differentiate the herds. And that's what you're doing with your online space. You are branding your space. You are saying, this belongs to me. It's not this one, it's not this one. This is my identity, this is my personality. And branding is an important part. And these are all branding style elements. We'll be looking at that in the workshop. There's one coming up next week. If you want to really add personality to your social channels and to your website, then I really want to invite you to join in. It's a two hour intensive live training and uh, there is a recording. So if you can't make it live, you can get the recording and work through the worksheets and really get a clear understanding of your branding. What elements are you gonna be using where photography is one of them to communicate your message. So people see even just the post or brief flyer, or if you're working online, offline, they know, whoa, that's her, that's his art. So that you're getting clear communication going out. This style element of photography, I mean, we all have heard it, an image speaks more than a thousand words. It's not always the words that we want them to communicate, and that's why it's good to get clear about your photography and how you use it. A wonderful quote by Maya Angelou that says, people won't remember what you said, they won't remember what you did, but they will remember how you make them feel. Art is also about an emotional experience. How you use your images, it's an emotion, it's a feeling, not just a rational thing, Woman with palette and paintbrush in front of easel. That's not how our brain thinks. It's a thinking. So how the light falls in an image, what the background looks like, what um, colors are being used, they all add to a feeling and a mood. And so I want you to think about this, this next coming days. What kind of mood or experience do you want to give your art audience? And there's a lot of correlation with your art because that's actually... Also, all your styling elements, your personality, you're putting that in your art form. Try it, just take some time to think it through. What mood or emotion do you want to communicate? There's a whole list here just to get you inspired. It's something that you want to have your um, communication really fresh and dynamic with lots of contrasting, complementary colors. Or is it more calm, naturalistic? Are you very much into the nature, into sustainability? What's important to you? What are your core values? And how do they emotively reflect in words? So write them down in words. That's a good place to start. And then from there, you can have a clear sort of framework for your imagery. Because then you can continually sort of check, is the imagery 
reflecting the emotion and the mood that I want to communicate on my social channels. Some good questions to ask. What do you want a visitor to feel or experience when they meet you in person? So that's where you're starting because you want to make your online space, the website, social channels, as if they're meeting you in person as much as possible. Of course, it has limitations, but then after visiting your website, your visitor must feel as if they've had a meeting with you. They've just come into your studio, your gallery, and they've had a little peek into who you are and what you're doing. But what is that that you want people to experience? You want them to feel at ease. You want them to feel excited. You want them to head out into an adventure. You want them to start thinking about certain subjects. You want them to have a little bit of unease. All be possible. We are all different. Try and find words to that. How do you want them to feel when they experience your art? When they leave an exhibition or they've been through an online exhibition, what do you want them to feel and experience when they visit your website or when they're scrolling through your social channels? Write them down. Try and get really concrete, really clear about this. And it can take a while as you're scrolling through other people's feeds, as you're looking at a lot of websites, as you're looking through your own photos that you've taken images on a vacation or you have maybe an archive. Start looking at images and see, okay, this is what I want, the mood that I want to reflect. And it's helpful to look at the seasons. That gives you nice four clean, distinct palettes that you can look at. Or is it more tending to be a sort of a winter atmosphere, more a summer atmosphere, very bright colors? Is it more spring, more lots of fresh uh, greens? Or is it a more of a, an autumn or the rounds, more the uh, muted colors? But it's so just to give you some framework so that you don't get lost and think, oh, I, mean, I just should put photos on my website or my social channels. No, you can have a framework because that will determine and help you with your how you're going to set up your brand. Large part, using photography is a large part of your brand style. It creates a mood. You all know that whether it's moving or still uh, images, it can create a mood. It's a personal experience. You can add personal elements through your photography. You can tell your story. If you take the photos, especially you know if they're little uh, moments in your life, only you can tell those stories. It makes it very personal. It shows your personality. And of course, you can use the video and the uh, photos, so stills and moving. And then you can decide, are you going to DIY, so do your own photography through your mobile phone, or maybe you have a, a, a DSLR camera, or you're going to outsource it by setting up a photo shoot, or maybe a combination of both. But make sure that it's cohesive and inspiring and make it intentional. And that's what we're going to look at, be looking at in the next section. You want images that work. It's about making compelling images, images that have been thought about. And we're going to start off with the technical side, now that you're clear about the atmosphere, how you're going to capture that image. So then we have to think about the camera, or you know, or you can use your mobile phone, the composition, that it's curated, you've made intentional choices, you've edited, you've added elements of color or not, <laughs> and there's context, so your images are telling a story that's relevant to your medium, what you want to, your goal, what that you want to achieve. There are many devices out there. Of course, our mobile phones are amazing. I put mine on a gimbal. This is uh, my phone, to most of my uh, communication and my posting with my mobile phone. Um, stability is super important when you are using um, a device like a mobile because it's not weighted. And of course, you want people to remember your message. So really, you know, get the most out of your art. So you want to have it stable. And a gimbal, this is a very nice gadget because you can just by using a little button, now that you can see it in that small little image there at the bottom of the screen, um, you can sort of navigate up, down, and around. And you can change the navigation, whether you want to do it horizontal or vertical, with the flip of a button. So this is really nice, and it's got a stand you can put down. 
and do live or you can take photos and you can also put it on a tripod. So stability is super important. But then finding out whether you want to use what device you're going to be using. Do you have a smartphone that you can do your own DIY uh, photography? Are you going to use still and add those moving images? And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, please, not video. <laughs> but video is so powerful using moving images because people hear your voice, see your animation, see how you're moving. And that's something maybe you need to practice, get more confidence about. But we can't escape that we are in a moving image li life. That, that, you know, video is just very powerful for social. Um, Facebook, Instagram really rewards people for using video. They tend to show far more up, uh, show them for more in the feeds, and you know just creates attracts attention. You know when there's a television on in a space, your eye just goes there all the time. It just it draws attention. So if people are scrolling on a feed and there's a video, the eye will your eye will catch that. So I have to think. You know if you haven't been using moving images, start thinking about that in this year because that also will add an extra dimension to your communication. And then thinking, what accessories do I need? And there's an array of accessories available out there. It doesn't have to be so expensive. I have this lovely fancy gimbal, but this to stabilize. But you know, at uh, stores, you can buy all kinds of uh, <laughs> gadgets. I'm just gonna put myself on this side. Your smartphone, of course, is great. You have a deal DSLR camera. Can't show you mine because I'm broadcasting with it on a tripod. And then you can take headphones. Headphones is not only great if you're using video, but it is a, also remote control, especially the headphones that you, um, not to the pods, but with the, the, the wires, you know, the really old fashioned ones, which I still have. <laughs> you can use that as a remote control. So you're not touching the screen. Because what happens if you use your mobile phone and you are taking a photo of your, you know, your beautiful painting, as soon as you should touch the screen, your mobile will move. So it is the best to put it on a tripod and then use the self timer. So it's, even if you're on the tripod and you're pressing your screen, it's still going to move. So it's the best to use your self timer, put it on 10 seconds on the tripod and move away then you can take the photo without it moving because the slightest bit of motion will give blurry images. And of course, the clearer your images are, the better you can communicate. So if you're using video, a remote control or the lapel microphones are handy, but most mobiles also have great um, microphones. Just make sure that you're not covering it when you are um, talking. And then some kind of grip is also very handy. This is a grip that I use also for the mobile. You can sort of grip any sort of electrical um, piping. I hook it on anything and everything just to give me some stability. And if I'm doing a selfie or I'm doing a video, then grips are handy. So just have a look online and see what's possible. And um, we have a gooseneck clamp. That's this. You can clamp it on a desk. On your desk or on your easel, and then you can clamp your mobile phone on the other hand end, and it just gives you a little bit of flexibility how you go, you know, if it's too low or too high. So these accessories can be handy and just get a few base stability and sound if you're adding video to have good sound. You'd rather have bad video and good sound than really perfect video and bad sound because people will not be listening to you. You want to have clear sound, so stability and sound, super important if you're going to be using those elements. And then the OLA clip, I don't have it um, personally, but you can, if you are in tight spaces, you can put it over your lens of your mobile phone and something you can just clip over it and then it gives you fish eye. So it gives you a, um, more of a wide angle. So what accessories do you need and how are you going to be taking your images? Composition, important aspect of taking photos. You are an artist, so this is something that you have uh, understanding about. So use your knowledge of composition. How are you going to create your personal style and feeling and emotion with composition? 
Are you going to vary it with close-ups, with wide angle? Are you going to use above the horizon, on the horizon, below the horizon? Are you going to get a ladder in your studio and take a lot of aerial photos? So people think, you know, that you go through the feed. Oh, yeah, that's a photo of her. I see a lot of aerial photos or a lot of sort of low on the horizon or a lot from on the artwork on the floor, depending, of course, on your art form. Think of how you can use composition to create your own style and so that you are making choices in that so that it also adds to your coherency so people start recognizing your images. And then what do you need to add or remove to enhance the mood of your composition? Do you need to take away some clutter? Do you need to lower that curtain, the roller blinds? Do you need to add something, maybe add an accessory so that it enhances your composition? These are things you can do intentionally and you can think, you know, I worked in the television for business for many, many years and we did a lot of reality TV <laughs> and people just thought, you know, things just happened. But a lot of the reality is all edited. It's all been thought about. It's all been, things are added or subtracted to make your message stronger. And it's the same with you. You are the director of your own imagery, of your own footage that you're taking in your studio. So you think about it, have a look at your background. Is it what you wanted to say? In, whether you're taking that image in front of your easel or in front of your pots of paint or your dirty palettes, you can edit. Just make little edits so that it reinforces your story. And then you can work with your framing. Of course, you have your wide cropping, you can have close ups, you can have medium shots. So that just that you know that you're not just pressing play, putting it online, that's it. You can do it very intentionally. And then you can, of course, crop images. So you take you can take a wider shot and you can crop it down to square, which is for the Insta feed. Then you can crop it down maybe for an IG story, which is, of course, the vertical orientation. So thinking of your orientation and can you take an image in your studio of your process, of yourself, and crop it down to size so that it is more, uh, you can use it in diverse ways. So thinking of composition and cropping. The rule of thirds is a basic of uh, photography. Also, if you are doing, of course, fine arts and working on flat surfaces, it's just a powerful rule just to keep in mind. It's as old as the pyramids of using those powerful thirds. And actually, just briefly, it's you can divide a space into equal thirds. And at the meeting point of those lines are very interesting places. So where lines intercept, that you can play certain details. So also think of your composition when you are taking a photo. Can I put something of interest at that intercept point? Can I use that rule of thirds? Like here, the horizon line is on the two third line. Can I lower my camera? Can I lower my mobile so that I can just get a little bit more of the horizon on the third line? because that just works with our brains, it works with our eyes, it's visually very pleasing. And you can use it to your advantage, or you can use it for your disadvantage. But this is a basic composition rule that you can add to your photos. Curated, very important, is that you need to make decisions what you're posting and what you're not posting. Not because you took it, you should be posting it, you need to be edited, you need to design your own communication. You are the director of your communication. If you want to build a business around your creativity, it needs that extra thought. Because everything that you communicate or don't communicate is sending out messages. And you want to curate that. So do the images that you communicate. Say what you want them to say. And this takes practice. Maybe you're just starting out. This is something, you know, think, oh, I just want to, I'm glad that there's some kind of photo on my website. You can practice. I'm still from the time of analog photography. I don't know about you. We just had film rolls. You know, we had to, like, it was very expensive. And you really had to think through your frames. How am I going to take my photos? And then you had to send it away. And you had to wait, you know, like four or five days before you can get your photos back. And then 
you know, you, there were all kinds of uh, results, but now we have our mobile phones. And you can take lots of photos. So I really want to encourage you to take plenty of images and develop a critical eye to see what works and what doesn't work. So you can build up a database of your own images, curate them. Does it add or subtract to your story? And the coherency, what I mentioned in the beginning, that our brain wants some kind of pattern. People want to start recognizing, will recognize your work because there is something that is repeated. That's something that's uniquely you. And is your image a point of conversation? You can also check and see on your feeds what's working, what posts are getting the most engagement, where are people, what do people respond to maybe in your audience? That's different for all of you, but have a look at those statistics. Does your uh, photo, the images that you post, invite a conversation? Because that's, it's a social platform. On your, maybe on your website, a little less, but on your social platforms, your images should invite a conversation. Get people, you know, um, you can ask a question, you can interact with the people, uh, talk about your art, your process, and uh, get people involved. People love uh, getting involved. You know, not everyone's an artist. Your art audience will just like ooh and ah with what you do because you have an interesting lifestyle. It doesn't have to be like, you know, superwoman. You're just being yourself. You are continually looking for inspiration. That's why you're making art. You're relating and filtering information. You're making choices. You're curating. And people are. That's inspiring to people. So use that in your conversation and in your communication. This is an artist that does beautiful um, spreads on her website, but also on her social channels. Very recognizable. Every time I see her when she's posting, I think, oh, that's Jennifer, that's Jennifer, that's Jennifer. Because she's developed a very distinct style in her art, and she's chosen what she's going to be posting. So it's very much her studio, it's her dog, it's certain color, it's certain um, framing for, from her sketchbooks and from what's on the easel, that it's recognizable. And uh, have a look at her feed. Jennifer Pushinsky from the States, using images, sometimes video, but a clean, a curated feed. Color, another element in photography that you can use. Add a lot of color, like Jennifer, or you can take color out. I know uh, artists that use certain filters on their photos. There's lots of apps out there that you can experiment with. So maybe you have a certain kind of filter that you're going more sepia or more black and white. You already are taking away the contrast or you're adding um, a certain kind of uh, uh, mood. So either you're making it cooler or you're making it warmer. That sort of tells your story. And you are consistently using that filter to promote. So it's not the selling part because the selling, of course, you need to be aware of filters because people want to see the art, how to actually be hanging on their wall. But in the promotion side, when you are marketing, when you're launching, when you're getting people excited and informing about your process, using color in your branding is very important. So how can you add color or take color away to reinforce the mood of the list that you're going to go through. What's that mood you want to communicate? Can you add your brand colors? So if you go through the workshop next week, we're going to be looking, building up your brand style guide. What does your brand style guide look like to bring your personality? And maybe there's like a color that keeps coming back. Can you add that color? Maybe you have your paints behind you or you are painting on your palette and you are highlighting that color in your photo. So when you have your feed, that color seems to pop up. It doesn't have to be in every post, but say every three or four posts, that color keeps coming back, creates coherency, brings recognizable uh, feeling to people, which builds trust, which is a great basis to start the sales conversation. That color really brings coherency. Now, an artist that we all know, before the social age, he was a great marketer, used certain kind of clothing. So this is his white, black and white shirt. He was a very prolific artist. He was one of the artists that made the most art, earned lots and lots of money. So it's not that like he didn't have any other clothing. 
It's something they used in his branding. How he dressed, of course, could be his favorite kind of clothes, but it's something you could choose too. You have a certain apron that you can put on when you're taking a selfie. So people, oh, that's uh, uh, recognizable. Or maybe have a chair in your studio that you can put your artwork on or display your products on that you have maybe an old chair from your grandmother or something that you've bought at a certain a shop that has some character that shares your personality. Can you use that as a staging area to take your photo so it becomes a recognizable thing, a certain color that keeps coming back, creating coherency. So what can you do <laughs> to bring that color and coherency? And then finally, the context. Does, because your image never is only alone, you must see your feeds, your website, it's all connected. The website in itself, but also your website to your social channel, to your offline communication. If you're using a flyer to exhibit, that color that keeps coming back, that topography keeps coming back, your logo keeps coming back, so that you have a clear message. Does your image work as on itself, but also does it reinforce the whole that you're trying to communicate? And does it add to what you're trying to say? Does it is it relevant? So what you're posting, thinking about, is thinking of posting, does it add to what where you are at that moment? So you're not breaking your feed or breaking the flow. Have a look at feeds. Sometimes you know you see like a post, and I think, oh, that really it, it's like a big mood board that you're making. Our Insta feeds have become so important as far as our portfolios. If that's something you want to work in commission or that you are licensing out your work, your clients will look at your Insta feeds. You want to have them curated so that there's a nice feel about it, if that's your intention. If you are at that place that you just want to post what you're doing, that's fine. Then that's intention. You're doing that intention. That's your strategy. But if your strategy is to elevate your work, through your art on your social feeds and on your social on your website, you have to have that extra layer of curation because it will add or distract from what you're trying to say. So make sure that it's relevant. Just briefly some tips. Take lots of images. Don't be afraid to take images. And I know you just want to make your art. You want to be busy, but this is also you thinking like a business person. You are communicating. Unless you have the luxury of having full gallery representation, and they're doing all the marketing for you, you'll have to get into that marketing frame of mind. And images are important to communicate. That's, you know, it says it's more than those thousand words. What images? So take lots of images and become skilled and comfortable with the device that you're using. So you have it at hand on your tripod that you have that a part of your art routine that you need to take images and play around with your images and then edit <laughs> what are you going to post and what makes what's relevant does it reinforce the mood in a variety of shapes using the horizon different orientation horizontal and vertical can you crop your images and then build up that database you can't start with this soon enough so go onto your computer if you haven't done so before and make files either make some kind of system so you have per year per month and you know, your photo um, software does that automatically, but then there's all kinds of photos of all other things, you know, your favorite food and a trip that you took. You want to get into your own database as far as your artistry is concerned. So that when you there's time to post, you have some kind of um, date, you have it already done. It doesn't take hours to look through. It's a habit that you can get into. On your um, computer, make a file. You can go by colors. You can go by themes, you can go, you know, make it, this is product, this is process, and this is personality. And just as soon as you take every week, take the Monday or the Friday afternoon when you're finishing uh, the week, drag photos into those files so that you have a database that's structured and organized so that when you come to post and you have your content. And then make it part of your routine, making those images using what's out there, what you have at hand to communicate your story. And then really want to encourage you to invest in a personal photo shoot. So professional, it's, a, it's an art form taking photos. You can do 
of course, a lot with your mobile, but save up, get the budget, maybe in a few months, get a professional photographer, because that'll elevate your art. So of your art to promote, to sell, very important if you're doing a listing online, having those good photos, high resolution, good photos, so clean and clear so people can zoom in, really see details of your work. And you can sprinkle those photos with your DIY photos. And that'll just give a nice, interesting balance. So get that photo shoot up and running in your planner. Look around online for local photographers. And, you know, with COVID, um, uh, with it, what's possible, get those that shoot planned in. And, of course, there's stock photos out there. Um, there's Pixabay, Unsplash, um, death of the stock photo <laughs> it's also these are free stock photos so maybe you don't have photos yet but you want to post you know close-ups of hands or of palette colors then you can have a look and curate them on these feeds these um, websites some of them are paid some of them are free and then make a list for yourself where do you need images so this is uh, michael rich He's a, an abstract artist, contemporary artist from the US. And uh, have a look at his website. He uses large images uh, as a home page as you come onto his website. Uh, curated content. You need photos in, for different things. So you need it for your website, for your um, home page. Talked about that in the last session you know, how you can, can lay out that home page. Then your About Me page is super important to have good photos of yourself. So this is maybe something that you want to outsource at a professional photo shoot or even do it yourself. Put your phone on portrait mode so that maybe just makes nice, a nice atmosphere. And then take a photo of yourself on the tripod. And then About Me page photos, looking to the camera friendly, open. People want to see, oh, it's a real person. And... Not just, you know, hiding behind something and thinking like, who's that blurry person there behind their paint tubes? Nice, open people, you know, when they're pulling out their credit cards to buy, <laughs> there needs to be trust. And the more you can substantiate and build that trust with your clients, the easier the transaction will be. And your social and your website channels are perfect places to start building that relationship for online sales but it will take some nurturing, it will take some time. People need to see you, understand you, and really feel like, whoa, I'm buying art from an artist, and uh, this is why and what he or she is doing. So make a list of the images that you need, and do they need to, can you DIY them, or can you outsource them? Just write down everywhere that you need. For your offline and online communication, maybe you need a flyer in June, you can have an open of an exhibition, you need a photo, maybe you have a press moment, you need a photo. On your home page, you need a photo, about page, you need a photo, that's photos of you. And then how are you going to, maybe products you are adding, a listing, you're adding a shop to your website. You need good photos for that. Can you DIY them or outsource them? And then you have your um different channel social what images do you need for that so that you can start planning your photography it's not just instantaneous and i'm all for instant and spontaneous but you need to have some kind of idea within the next three months what kind of images are you going to be needing so that you can communicate in a more powerful and clear way and then make a mood board if you're the mood boardy kind of person you love Pinterest or just pen and paper and cutting, make a mood board of your photo style. Have a look at other feeds that really in, you know, inspire you, that get you excited and think, whoa, I love that style. Make a mood board and try and dissect what it is that you love. Is it the backlight? Is it the color? Is it the horizon? Is it the composition? Is it that it's really personal? Is it uh, because there's more people, because there's animals? Is it that rug that you just see coming back as texture it can be so many things, but develop your eye and develop a language where you can bring your personality in your communication and have fun. Experiment. This is a fun process of, you know, it's actually putting you out there. Who is it that you want to, people to um, meet 
like they're meeting for you in person. And then maybe take a course. You know, you need to have the technicalities. Um, there's not, not so much time in this session to go through the technicalities, but just getting an understanding of, you know, how uh, you can compose, how you use color uh, balancing can just help you. And there's a lot of online courses and uh, you know, maybe have someone in your family that's good with photography. Just take go through the basics and then find, you know, apps that can help you to uh, edit, to change the mood according to what you've decided that you want to communicate. In closing, um, I have a resource. It's called um, the Artist Website Checklist. If you are thinking of working on your website, maybe you are working on your website, and you need some kind of a framework just to make sure that you have all your bases covered. This is um, a resource that I want to offer you. It's for free. You can go to my website. This is the URL and then just go through the checklist. Just see, you know, how do I have all my bases covered? And then, as I mentioned, the mini course coming up, uh, the next one is next week, Thursday. Um, it's a live training. And if you can't make it live, it's, it will be recorded. So you can go through it at your, in your own time, but you can head over to my website to have a look. And also on my website, there's all kinds of uh, resources. I have a, a podcast that you can listen to with resources. I have my course, uh, starting in the 1st of March. You're welcome to join in. This is like a slither of what I do and that's a 12 week course. We really go deep into who you are as an artist, your own style, developing your own artistic style, how you can start communicating who you are in your art, in a marketing message, in your branding, in your website, in your social channels. At the, at the press, you know, working with galleries, how can you price your art? How can you write your artist statement? all comes out of who you are as an artist and how does that reflect in your art. And these are, aren't things that you uh, learn at art schools. This is, and you don't need to be having an MBA in marketing. It's just, you know, artists and my artists. There's a community around this course too. So I really want to encourage you. Is there something that you're thinking about? You want to take next steps, really want to grow with your, as an art and art entrepreneur. I highly recommend this course. It's called The Working Artist you can look on my website under the tab course. And you can read all about it, the modules, the lessons, the worksheets. You can have a look and see if that's maybe your next step. I want to open up the floor for questions. If there's anything that you want to uh, ask, then this is an opportunity to ask. And uh, please also, if you have certain tips, maybe you have a certain app that you love using, Put it in the comments we're here to help each other just uh, write down something that you love using or maybe you have a favorite gadget that you like uh, using <laughs> whatever it is